Good morning, Destiny Chapel. How are you doing? We have missed you. Oh my goodness. And everybody that is watching us this uh, morning, welcome to our Sunday service. How are you doing? Just a few days to Christmas. Oh, oh my, my. I love the Lord and I love what he has done. It's been an amazing year. And I know you're looking at me and wondering how comes this guy saying it's an amazing year. It's been an amazing, amazing year. Despite the pandemic, despite what has been happening, despite what we have lost, I can tell you the Lord has been on our side. And this morning I've been re reflecting even on the blessings of the Lord. You know, the Bible says that the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. And I want to take this moment and read through and walk with me and just tick you know somewhere tick on your mind in your heart the things that the Lord has done for you even as we take this moment to even pray and go in the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving in our heart listen to what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and from verse 1 glory to God listen the Bible says if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, then the Lord your God will set you high. Woo! Above all nations of the world, you will experience all these blessings. My, my, listen, your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. Uh -huh. The offsprings of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit basket and bread boards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you, but yes, listen, in one direction, but they will be scattered seven different ways. Listen to verse, the Bible says, the Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouse with grain. Your Lord God, uh, your, the Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you glory to God. I tell you, if I take a piece of paper today, all right, if I take a piece of paper today and on one side I write all the things that have come to pass, I can tell you I will feel so many full scabs. And on the other side, if I write the things that haven't come to pass, they are only few. And this moment, I want us to take this hour and just go before the Lord in thanksgiving. I love verse 8. That is my theme verse today. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do. He guarantees a blessing on you. Even on the few days that are remaining until we are done with this 2020. I be, <laughs> many are saying that we want to wrap up this year and just throw it into the dustbin. Eh, 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 eh. This is still the year of the Lord because the blessings that God has guaranteed and he guaranteed upon us even when we started the year 2020 oh on that night <laughs> that night when we were crossing over to the new year our hopes were high our energies were high and I believe that there are many blessings that have come to pass so this hour and this moment take a few minutes with me and go before the Lord with thanksgiving in the name of the Lord why because the blessings that God guaranteed for us they have to come number one you have life you have peace you are here you are healed you are blessed you have a hope for 2021 my goodness thank you Jehovah king of glory for you a word is true you're not a man that you should lie neither a man that you should repent of what you say jehovah king of glory you have promised and you have kept your promise you have guided us you have led us jehovah father we have searched the scriptures and the word of the lord has filled our hearts with hope yes lord and this hope has manifested in in the physical jehovah king of glory you have fought our enemies. Lord, you have scattered them seven different ways, Jehovah Father. You have lifted us a standard higher, Jehovah King of Glory. You have provided food for us. There is no day, Jehovah King of Glory, we have lacked because you have come through even in the last minute, Jehovah Father. And we say thank you, Jehovah King of Glory. You have protected our families. You have protected our lives. Even the season and the times that we were walking through the valley 
these are the shadows of death. You kept our hopes high. Lord, we were in the deathbed, but you were there with us. Your presence has been with us. You have kept us, oh God. And I thank you, Jehovah King of Glory, because even in this season, our faith has been strengthened. If the Lord is on our side, who can be against us? Lord, I thank you for, for we have had to endure. And I thank you for the promise that you have given us, O King of Glory, that we count it all joy when we go through trials. Because when our faith is tested, then we have an opportunity to grow our endurance. And our endurance, when it grows, then we will be made perfect, lacking nothing. Jehovah, King of Glory, thank you for perfecting our faith in you, that we cannot waver. Whatever comes our way, we are strong. Whatever storms comes our way, our foundation is strong and is in on you, Jehovah King of Glory. Thank you, my Father, because when the foundations were shaken, our foundation never shook. Jehovah God, why? Because we are built on you, Jesus Christ, and every day we are being built in you, Jehovah Father. Thus, Lord, we look forward. We look to the days that are coming with hope. <laughs> with the resilience of a people who want to conquer. And Lord, as we approach and as we focus on the glory that is set before us, whatever comes our way, it doesn't matter because we know the Lord is on our side. The enemies are the enemies are scattered. Jehovah King of Glory and the armies of the Lord are on our side fighting our battles. Thank you for the abundance. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the healing in the name of Jesus. And anyone that is watching us today, listening to us today, and my father, their hope, Jehovah King of glory, is dying. Their faith is dying. Jehovah Father, I pray that meet them. Touch their hearts, Jehovah King of glory, this hour and this morning. Restore the joy of their salvation in the name of Jesus. And I pray that our focus and our focus will only be on you, Jehovah God, will only be on your word and what you are doing. Knowing that Jehovah King of glory, you have had our backs and you will have our backs even in the future. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Jehovah King of glory. We sing songs of praise. Praises. Oh, even as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior who came to redeem us oh, from the kingdom of darkness, from the curses of sin and death, from the curses of poverty and destruction. And Lord, you have transferred us into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of truth. We thank you and we bless you, Jehovah, King of glory, because today we are sons and daughters of the Lord of the Most High. We glorify you and we honor you in Jesus. Jesus name we pray amen and amen remember your blessing is guaranteed in the Lord so do not waver do not look to the left or the right do not look at the circumstances around you do not look at the ear and say oh what a horrible year this is the year of the Lord and the blessings of the Lord are yes and amen and I can tell you it only takes a moment and God transforms our lives completely hold on Glory to God. Now, are you ready even to celebrate? Christmas is here with us. And the spirit of Christmas is our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. Back in time, 2,000 plus years ago, Jesus was born. And that's the reason we are here celebrating. So I want you to join me and join Bartha and join Winnie as we sing some Christmas carols. Glory to God. Welcome Winnie and Bartha. Wow, what a tremendous, wonderful morning to be alive. Hallelujah. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this service at Destiny Chapel. You're very welcome to join in song with us as we sing and we play instruments for God. To start us off, we are going to have Jesse and Ryan doing We Three Kings duet on the violin. Welcome.
And now we are going to invite JB to play for us Hack the Herald Angels Sing. to have O Holy Night duet, feel free to join us as we sing this for you, Betha and I.
And now we have Ryan coming to play for us away in a manger on the piano. Welcome, Ryan. And now, our little Ryan, who is not little anymore, he's now a big boy, but doing a great job, uh, is going to play for us Jingle Bells. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, for that beautiful play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we are going to have my children, Abby and Jesse. Abby on the cello and Jesse on the violin playing Oh Holy Night. Mm
Thank you so much. Now we're going to have a silent night duet with Bertha. Hallelujah.
yourself a merry little Christmas with JB. <laughs> Thank you very much all for watching. I hope you shared in the joy of Christmas with us today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful time. Glory to God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you for such a wonderful, wonderful time. Glory to God. Let me tell you, every time um, we, we, we sit down and sing carols, especially there is a song that hits differently when I listen to it and even sing along. Oh my goodness. I will tell you which one it is. But for now, are you ready to give? Yes, because we have been blessed. But listen, before we give, the Bible says in uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 that let the message of Christ uh, dwell in you richly. Uh, let me read it again uh, in L NLT. Let the message about Christ in all its riches fill your lives teach you and counsel you uh, and teach each other with all wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. I want this morning, even as we give, even as we share, I want us to do it out of the riches that God has given us. Give it with a heart full of thanksgiving. Glory to God. I want you to approach the throne of God with thanksgiving. Why? Because God has been an amazing God. And you're saying, thank you, my God, for what you have done for me, for you have taken care of me. Remember, we have read Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we have seen the promises that God has given to us, and he guaranteed that they shall come to pass. Now we are looking at the end of the year and the much that God has done for us how much more what more can we do but just to say thank you so today as you give today as you offer your your your, your offerings today and in, in the presence of the lord do it with a thanksgiving and a thankful heart because god has been an amazing an amazing god and i know he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so he has heard us and he has delivered us and he has blessed us it's our moment to say thank you to our God through Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you as you give. We have uh, our, our pay bill. You can see it on the screen. You know, just go on and give. And I know that the Lord indeed blesses a heart that is grateful. Glory to God. Amen 
and amen. Boys, we have been having this wonderful challenge, the 40-day challenge, praying for these wonderful brothers and sisters of ours that we need them, you know, to receive the light of God. And I know that God is doing amazing, amazing job. And our evangelist has been doing an amazing job, teaching us and sharing with us on what to do and giving us instructions. And I believe that you've been following them and the success is 100%. One more time, let us welcome our very own evangelist John Magangi to take over and even share the word of the Lord in this season. Karibu sana evangelist. Amen and amen. God bless you. Glory to God. Well, thank you so very much, Pastor Joe. What a joy and a blessing it is to come together again in this setting and be able to share together on a Sunday morning like today to enjoy and to celebrate the goodness of God. Let me quickly take this opportunity to wish everyone that is on this, uh, you know, session right now, this service watching right now, I want to take this opportunity and sincerely from the bottom of my heart, wish you a Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. And a tremendous 2021. I know that we are coming to that season of time now, you know, because today is the last Sunday before. For Christmas. So I want to take this time and just tell you, hey, we wish you a tremendous time. We pray that this will be a wonderful, wonderful day. You know, may this day be a, a memorable day, one that you look back on years from today and, and just enjoy reflecting back and remembering the wonderful season and wonderful day that God gave to you. So please, from my heart to yours, from my family to yours, I want to just take this moment and say, Merry Christmas. Enjoy celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ's birthday and have a wonderful time, you and your entire family family in Jesus precious name also I want to take this opportunity and let you know that today will be the last day of our 40 day salvation challenge series can you even believe it hallelujah we've come to the end of our, of our 40 day salvation challenge series and this will be the last Sunday obviously we actually finish the 40 days themselves on Friday which actually happens to be Christmas Day and so be looking out for our you know daily posts until that time and in fact also I want to just draw your attention to the fact that on that uh, Christmas morning day, we are actually going to share and present to you a link to, uh, you know, a video message that you'll be able to share with your loved one. It'll be a special presentation of the gospel, you know, just basic, simple, clear gospel. We trust God will be able to use that to communicate the truth of salvation to the person that you've been praying for. We are so excited. We look forward to awesome, awesome times. Hallelujah. Of uh, just hearing great reports of God's intervention and what God will have done. So we really look forward to that. Amen. In Jesus' name, we believe with you that your loved one will get born again. Let me just encourage you and just uh, congratulate you for coming this far. And uh, just to let you know that um, you have made a tremendous investment into the life of your loved one. You know, God will definitely use your prayer time and everything that you've been pushing through in prayer. I believe God the Holy Ghost is going to take that, hallelujah, and use it for his own glory. And, um, and your loved one will be, you know, tremendously impacted by the, by the power of the word of God even in the days to come in Jesus' mighty name. Awesome. Glory, glory, glory to God. We give God the praise and the honor. So, hallelujah. Today, we want to just um, complete our series, like I said earlier. Uh, but remember, like we, you know, we shared last week, you know, this is... Um, a, a mini series. We, we're doing a mini series within the major series. <laughs> and so we're going to take some time right now and, um, you know, just conclude everything, the major series and the mini series together. We want to finish them today as we um, look into the Word of God in just a moment. Hallelujah to the glory of God. So we, 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 we started last week by looking at. Um, the women of Christmas. Come on, somebody. The women of Christmas. And so, you know, last week we looked at a tremendous woman of God and the awesome, awesome, amazing lessons we learned from this woman called Elizabeth. You know, when you think about the Christmas story, the Christmas story um, is, um, is a setting. It, it, it's, it's set in, a, uh, you know, a, a, in, in the backdrop of people's ordinary lives. You know, Christmas happens in ordinary people's lives. When you look at the story of Elizabeth, she's just a regular, ordinary woman who has had a unique path in life. She's walked down a unique path. Her life is very different from every other ordinary, average woman's life, you know. 
and uh, you know she's gone through some amazing challenges and walked through difficulty and endured much disgrace and embarrassment in fact you know if you keep reading her story later on you discover when she finds she's pregnant five months she you know makes this statement she says the lord has finally removed my disgrace from me which says that even by the time you know we are coming to this whole christmas season for her you know she was living righteously you know she was holy and pure before God. The Bible says she was blameless, she and her husband both. You know, they were blameless before God, but they had actually, even at this point, still been carrying some shame, carrying some disgrace. It never left her, you know, it never left her mind that, you know what, I was a woman that would never, never give birth. You know, I was barren, you know. The disgrace of barrenness was still hanging on to her life. But you know what, in the Christmas story, this is, this is what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about Jesus Christ, God's divine Emmanuel intervention in the lives of ordinary people with regular challenges, you know, regular issues that they are walking through. Hallelujah. And I also want to encourage you, even for you, I know you have your own issues. I know you have your own ordinary, you know, everyday, you know, complexities and perplexities and difficulties and challenges. Hey, this is, this is why Christmas is here. This is why Jesus came. Jesus came into ordinary lives like yours and mine. And I want to encourage you, don't miss out on, on his intervention. Don't miss out. This, this is the whole fact. This is, this is, what, this is what we are celebrating. Why are we celebrating Christmas? We are celebrating God's intervention in the lives of ordinary people with supernatural, miraculous interventions. This is what it's all about. Woo. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. I thank God. Lord, I thank you for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you for your coming, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you came into the lives of ordinary, everyday individuals. Nothing spectacular, nothing, you know, sophisticated. We're just ordinary, everyday people walking through regular challenges. But you, oh God, have promised and you have come and you did come, Lord, to intervene in our lives and to bring into our lives the God dimension. You, 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 you came in as the plus into the minuses of our lives and we praise you and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. As we celebrate Christmas, we are saying thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even the ordinary issues we are going through right now, Lord, we thank you that you are the solution. You are the wisdom we need. You are the addition we need. You are the counsel we need. You are the power we need. You are the healing we need. Lord God, you are the solution in terms of relationships that we need, oh God. Thank you for being our solution. Thank you for being our answer, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and glory and honor in the name of the Lord. We pray hallelujah to God. I'm so excited. And praise the Lord. <laughs> This is why Christmas is awesome. You know, Christmas is awesome because it's God, Emmanuel, coming to be with us. Coming to be with us in our ordinary, everyday, regular, challenging situations. Jesus coming into, the, into, the, into that whole setting. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ is birth was so ordinary that, um, you know, even, I mean, there's nothing spectacular about his birth. The King of Kings, the God of heaven and earth, the God of the universe. And yet when he's born, Think about this. He's born into a manger. You know, his first visitors are shepherds. Ordinary guys. No kingly pomp and no celebrities. Just a regular, everyday, ordinary God. Hallelujah. Coming into our lives. Intervening in our lives. This is who God is. This is the beauty of Christmas. And I want to encourage you today that even, even in your situation, this is why you need to welcome Jesus into your life. This is why Jesus needs to be a part of your life. Because he comes into the lives of people, ordinary people people like yourself with ordinary challenges with regular challenges maybe even extraordinary challenges but the truth of the matter is thank God he is extraordinary when he comes into your ordinary li life he makes your life or he brings an extraordinary intervention into your life glory to God Hallelujah. <laughs> and so anyway, so we're looking at the life of Elizabeth last week. And uh, what a tremendous lesson we learned from her life and how that she was able to be strong and walk through this journey. But God remembered her and God resurrected her hopes. And God resurrected her dreams, and gave her a tremendous son. And God blessed her with a beautiful, beautiful, you know, ending to her story. Hallelujah. It's one of those stories that ends with her and they lived happily ever after. You know, just an amazing ending. I mean, can you imagine, you know, ending? 
spending your life at probably 80 something years of age with a son and your son goes on to become the greatest man that ever lived outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, your son has the, pre the, 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 the premier privilege of uh, introducing God in the flesh to the world. Come on, what an awesome honor. Anyway, so it was an awesome time. So today we want to look at two other women. Somebody say two, two, glory to God. Two other women that we want to look at, you know, today. Two other women of Christmas. And I pray that we, by the Holy Ghost, Lord, Holy Spirit, help us to catch these lessons because they are powerful and they're important for us in our life. So today we're going to look at uh, the life of another woman. And this time it's a young one. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> It's a young woman. This time, last, last week we looked at an older woman, a very much older woman. But today we're looking at a younger woman. In fact, she's in her late teens by the time we meet her. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, she is just going around her regular business, just doing her own thing. You know, she's now, according to, to the culture of that day, she was now uh, about to get married. She was actually betrothed, you know, to be married and pledged to be married to a young man called Joseph. And, and of course, this I'm talking about none other than Mary. Hallelujah. And Mary is just, you know, just a regular girl. She is, now watch this, she is where Elizabeth probably was 50 or 60 years ago. She's right there. You know, Elizabeth is finishing her life. She, so, uh, at least so she thought. But here's Mary at the beginning. You know, the Christmas story is so beautiful. It's for all of us at all stages of life. You are never too old to inc include the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Excuse me. And you're never too young to include the Lord Jesus Christ and his interventions in your life. So here's Mary. She's at the very point where Elizabeth and, Ze and Zechariah were probably f half a century ago. Yeah, she's, she's about to get ready to get married. And, uh, and all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, one day, in uh, verse 26 of Luke chapter 1, it says in the sixth month, now in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, you know, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. Very important point there. She was a virgin. She was not... Um, you know, she was not other than a virgin. She was a virgin. I know you understand what I'm saying. So she, she you know, this, this lady, this girl, Mary, was a, a virgin betrothed to a man uh, uh, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and, and considered what man of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Wow. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Wow. So Mary is going about her daily business one day, and the angel of, of the Lord visits her. You know, and so she, she, she has this angelic visitation, and the angel breaks this amazing news to her. And uh, that, that, that we just got to verse 33 there, but I want us to just look at verse number 34 here. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? You know, and then um, it says in verse 35, the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. <laughs> Therefore also, that holy child, that holy one uh, who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And then he says, actually, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And uh, this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, verse 38, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Wow. What a beautiful story. Hallelujah. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> 
Now, there's, there's a number of things that I think are very important for us to, 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 to look into here and, and draw some important lessons. Remember, this is the backdrop is ordinary people's lives, you know, living their regular lives, facing their, their regular challenges. But it's into this setting that the Lord God comes. God comes into our regular everyday lives. God wants to participate. God wants to join with us in those in, in, in that you know regular life. I don't know maybe what you're engaged in, what your regular engagement is. You know, you're a regular work, maybe you are, you know, you 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 work a job somewhere, um, you know, maybe you're a housewife, maybe you're a, you know, um, just um, a gentleman that that um, you know uh, is involved in in, in in a particular industry. I don't know, whatever your life, but your life is ordinary. Your life is regular. Hey, this is the good news. God wants to get into that ordinary life of yours. This is the message of Christmas. <laughs> God wants again. God wants to share that ordinary life of yours. Hallelujah! I pray that you'll open your heart to Him. If you have never given your life to Christ, today is the day. Because the good news is, as ordinary as you think your life is, or as challenged and as a, you know the, the issues that you think are going on there, I want to give you the good news that God wants to share your life. He's ready, he's willing, he's, he's just waiting for you to open up your heart and to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to share this life of mine with you. It's not the most perfect life, but it's, it's, it's a life. And if you're interested, you're welcome. Hey, if you share that kind of an invitation with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will experience a tremendous, tremendous visitation. Hallelujah of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so here's the thing I want us to look at in the life of Mary. You, when you look at Mary's life, there are many things that probably stand out when you think about her life. But I want us to examine something here that is very, very important. When you look at the life of Mary, you know, when the angel spoke to her, you know, she said, she responded, she said, well, um, uh, okay, I mean, it's like, how is this going to happen, you know? All these amazing, wonderful things that have been spoken about the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and me being his mother and everything, but uh, how is this going to happen? You know, uh, because I'm a virgin. I mean, clearly, I, I'm, I'm angel. Did you miss your timing? I mean, Joseph and I are about to get married. Uh, I don't know whether maybe you're a bit early or because I mean, I, I'm a virgin. I, I, I'm not, I, I, you know, I can't have a baby. How is this going to happen? Now, keep that in mind. And remember, if you go back to, you know, uh, chapter 1 and verse 13, where Zechariah is also visited by the same angel, Gabriel. And when, 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 when Gabriel gives Zechariah the news, Zechariah asks the same question. How can this be? You know, because, you know, I am old now and my wife is, my, because my wife is barren and also she, she's old. Now, when you look at the two uh, questions, they look on the surface to be the same. And when you look at Angel Gabriel's responses in both situations, they are different. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because with Zechariah, Gabriel says, you know what? I am Gabriel who stands before God. I've been sent to give you good news. Now you shall be mute and shall not be able to speak until the words that have spoken to you come to pass. So Zechariah gets chastised for nine months, you know. But Mary asks the same question. It's like, well, you know. Uh, Gabriel gives an answer and says the Holy Ghost will come upon you and that's what's going to happen. So what's the difference here? And it's a, there's a powerful lesson for us to draw from this, uh, you know, uh, uh, this contrast. The, here's the difference. The difference is the spirit of Zechariah's question was unbelief. I mean, it was based on natural reasoning, it was based on his analysis, it was based on his many years of experience. I don't see that happening, is basically what Zechariah is saying. But you contrast that with what Mary said. Mary says, the spirit of our, of our question, okay? So the spirit of Zechariah's question is unbelief and doubt, but the spirit of Mary's question is, okay, so what do I need to do to cooperate to bring this thing to come to pass? Two different questions, two similar questions, but, but two different spirits, two different perspectives, two different paradigms from where they are coming from. You know, Mary is thinking, okay, tell me what to do, how, 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 how do, what do I, I mean, I, I'm, not a, I'm not married, I'm a virgin, how, how, do, how do I cooperate with this process to get it done? Zechariah is like, well, man, I, you know, I've lived a few years and uh, I've never seen anything like this happening, you know, so I don't know how this is going to happen. And that is the difference. And that is the difference between even how we respond to God. You know, what God is telling us is something impossible, something supernatural is going to happen. 
you know, and, and but 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 it's very easy for us to respond and say, but Lord, there's a barrier. There's a natural barrier in what you're saying. Of course, there's a natural barrier, Zechariah. This thing is supposed to be supernatural. This whole thing is, is supernatural. You know, this is not going to be a natural thing. The God we serve is a supernatural God, and he wants to do a supernatural thing. And so you, you have to drop the natural barriers in your mind. What about Mary? What is Mary's answer? says, you know, there is a natural barrier. How do we overcome it? Simple. Here's the thing that I like about Mary. Mary shows us, and I, I know, like I said earlier, there's many things, there's many lessons we can draw from Mary's life. But here is, I believe for me, the most premier lesson we carry from Mary's life. Mary had simple, childlike faith. <laughs> she was just a simple girl. She was just simple. It's like, okay, God wants to do this thing? Okay, so what do I do? How do I cooperate with him? What do I need to do? You know, that's her response. Mary had simple childlike faith that enabled the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, the, the power of the Holy Ghost to work out something supernatural through her life. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. I pray for you as I pray for me this Christmas season. Please take that lesson home. Look, the, the issues and the challenges you will face will be impossible. I mean, we face impossibilities in our lives. Sometimes it's a natural situation. Sometimes even a supernatural challenge that is making things impossible. But the point is this. God wants us to realize that if we can come to the place with simple childlike faith, if we can trust him with simple childlike faith, we don't need a faith as large as a mountain to move a mountain. We need faith as little as a mustard seed to move a mountain. God is telling us, look, all I want, Mary, all I want, Joseph, is simple, childlike faith. Trust me. I'm the one who's going to do this thing. <laughs> it's, not, it's not you. Oh, I know there are natural processes. I know there are natural things. And, and you will have to do some of those things. But at the end of the day, I want you to trust that I can make it happen. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. I want to challenge you. It is God who's going to make this thing happen for you in your life. The issue you are challenged with right now, the, 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 the you know, difficulty, the impossibility you're facing right now. Hey, this is what Christmas is all about. Come on, look back on your life. Look at 2020. You know, look at the situation. You look at 2021. Look back and reflect and look forward and project it and think about your life and see all the difficulties, see all the impossibilities. I want to declare and I want to prophesy to you. May 2021 be the year, the year that is, uh, you know, most different from all other years. Why? Because you will have come to a place where you have decided in your heart to have simple childlike faith. Do you know what makes our years tough? You know what makes our challenges even more difficult than they are? is the mentality and the conviction and the perspective that this is impossible. And so our minds decide it's impossible. Then now our choices and our actions and our, you know, responses become, you know, challenged. We, 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 we operate from a place where there's a, um, a subconscious knowing that what I'm, what I'm involved with is impossible. What I'm doing is impossible. You know, there's just a, just a, a subconscious, um, you know, um, the spirit of our mind makes it makes us come to a point where we we, 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 we we may be doing something, but internally we actually have a conviction. We are convinced that it's impossible. So our actions may be, you know, in an attempt to try and make it work, but we believe something else. So we sabotage ourselves, you know. And I want to encourage us today. This is the story of Christmas. Of course, it's impossible. Of course, there are challenges. Of course, there are tremendous difficulties. But what does God ask of you, oh man? Hallelujah. What God is calling us to do is to have the faith of a teenage girl. Call Mary way back many Christmases ago. Hallelujah. She, all she had was simple, childlike faith. She just trusted God. I mean, have you ever, have you ever dealt with children? I love children. <laughs> I love children, especially when they are three, four, five. You know, when they have those amazing, wonderful, and um, most awesome questions that you've never heard of with all your 40 plus years of living. You've never heard of them. <laughs> they ask you some of these amazing, random questions like you're like, 
okay, where did that come from, you know? Where is that, uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's like it's very profound, you know, coming from a child, you know? But, what, but, but, but when you give them explanations, when you're, even you're challenged to give them, but you just tell them, you know what, a very simple thing, you tell them, you know what, um, God is able to do it. They say, okay, and they believe you. And that's the end of story. It's like, okay, they are content, they are satisfied with the fact that there's somebody else called God who is able to do it. I don't know how he'll do it. I don't care how he'll do it. I'm not even really interested in the details. I just think, will he do it? Yes. Okay, fine. Let's do it. That's the simple heart that God wants us to take away. Hallelujah. May this uh, year, may this uh, um, December, may this Christmas, Hallelujah. May this Christmas season, may, may, the, may the Holy Spirit help you to package that lesson, carry it away, snug, snuff it, stuff it into your spirit, and may you carry it throughout 2021. May you face 2021 with a simple conviction that I don't know the details. I don't need to know the hows and wherefores or the whys and the wherefores. All I need to know is that God is able Simple child of I pray, I, I pray that you'll face 2021 with a simple childlike faith. You're not a child, you just have childlike faith. You know, you, you believe God, you just trust God. You know, he says, somebody says, but it can't be that simple. So, okay, so you want to make it difficult. You know, I mean, what are we going to do? You know, it, it, but it can't be. No, 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 it is really that simple. We trust God. And now, when I say that we trust God and it's simple, Trust in God is a simple thing. The next bit of that is as you trust God, God will give you instructions. When God gives you an instruction, just do the instruction, that's all. Wait for the next instruction. You know, and when God gives you another instruction about what to do, do that and just enjoy your, continue enjoying your life. You know, like Elizabeth, just enjoy your life and have fun. Remember Elizabeth went through all these difficulties and all this, but she got above it. She got to a place where she was able to ride above the ridicule and the mockery and all the difficulties. She was able to come above that issue and continue enjoying her life, serving God righteously and blamelessly. Hallelujah. So Mary is telling us, if you take childlike faith and, 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 and receive God's instruction, then you can get to Elizabeth's level and just say, you know what? I'm going to just enjoy my life. I'm going to obey this specific instruction. I'm not going to sweat it, sweat, 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 you know, try to figure this thing out and sweat bullets trying to figure out what's going to happen. No, I'm going to trust God simply like a child. And when I hear instruction from him, I do it to the best of my ability. And then I continue enjoying my life. You know? Because it's going to have to be God's supernatural power that's going to turn things around. So I want, to, I want to just encourage us. As you ask how this year, it's not, that you, it's not, it's not like you can't ask how this is going to happen. You can, but remember, as you ask that question, remember the spirit with which you ask it. Don't ask that question with the spirit of Zechariah. Hallelujah. Zechariah's spirit was, how? Because this is impossible. That's one way to look at it. That was Zechariah's spirit. But you can ask how, but ask with Mary's spirit. And her spirit was, okay, what do I do to cooperate? You know, how is it going to happen in terms of what do I need to do? That's a completely different paradigm. Hallelujah. This is what God wants us to do. And I pray the blessing of God of your love. May God help you and help me as well. That in 2021, even as we ask how, we are not asking how to, to explain why it can't happen. We are asking how to figure out, Lord, how do I cooperate? It's, it's clearly impossible. It's beyond my league. I'm a virgin. There's no way this is going to happen. But I'm in for the ride. You know, whatever is going to, however it's going to turn out, <laughs> I'm in for the ride. Just tell me what to do. How do I cooperate? Okay, I'll do that. And then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for you to do the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the heart of God. And this is the will of God for us. And, and I want to just encourage us today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things that I was meditating on this earlier, and, um, you know, it, it came to my spirit that, you know, when you think about the name of Mary, Mary is actually a Hebrew name. Um, and, and really with the, the, the foundation, the root meaning of the word Mary, it, it comes from the, from the word Mara. If you remember in Exodus when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt and they came to a place where the bitters were, I mean the waters were bitter, and they said this is Mara. That's, that's where the, word, the name Mary comes from. Mary comes from Mara, and Mara means bitterness, you know. And so think about this. Think about how God paints the picture here. You know, here is a people, Israel, at this point in time, you know, Israel is under 
Roman bondage. You know, the Roman Empire is is is, is colonizing Palestine and, and, and Israel, and uh, so they have created a lot of a, a lot of bitterness. That's why people like uh, you know Zacchaeus, the tax collectors who are cooperating with the with the Roman Empire to, to tax people, were not very popular because why the, the the Roman Empire was was had their thumb on Israel. You know, they were progressive and all these things and all that. You know, so there's a lot of bitterness. People are bitter of heart. So Mary becomes a picture of society, the bitterness that is in society. But into that bitterness, the Bible says, you know what God, what, what God told Moses to do in the, in the wilderness? He said, cast a tree into, mm, cast a tree into the pool and the waters will become sweet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is, I believe, in Exodus 15. You know, but the, here's the thing. Think about it. You know, it's, a, it's the same scenario here. When you see Mary, Mary represents society. You know, the woman, she, she you know, in nations are usually called she. You know, so anyway, so it's, it's a, Israel is in, is in bitterness, bitter bondage, but God casts the tree. The tree of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. He, 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 the Lord cast this tree into these bitter waters at what we call Christmas today. And his intention is to make, make the bitter waters sweet to the glory of God. Wow. So Mary, Mary is, a, is a tremendous example. And she teaches us powerful lessons. Well, the most powerful lesson I believe that we draw from our life is that you and I, when faced with, you know, bitter circumstances and facing impossibilities. Simply walk in childlike faith. It's God who's going to do it. It's not you and I who's going to do this thing. You know. It's not, it's, it's, it's not your effort. It's not your understanding. It's not your intellect. It's not your, you know, your capacities. It's not what you can do. It's what God can do. What God is saying is, look, I want to share your life. I want to come into this scenario. I want to intervene in your life but 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 i'm a gentleman i'm not going to force my way into i'm not a thief i'm not a robber that i just come into your life by force no i want you to know that i can but i'm giving you the chance to say yes that's the whole story right here that's the whole story that's what christmas is all about god knows our circumstances god knows the bitternesses we're coming from god knows the challenges we face god knows where we've walked god knows the failures and the challenge and the bitterness and the and the losses that we've gone through he understands all of that and he's saying hey i'm willing to come into your life i'm ready i'm here you can trust me i can do this i can do this and i'm willing to come will you say yes are you open for this are you willing to come into this relationship where I can come into your life and, and, and release my power and intervene in your life? Are you willing to do this? It's a matter of willingness. It's your willingness. Are you willing? This is the whole equation. This is the, all, all eternity for you. Hallelujah. And for me, hangs on that question. Are you willing? Are you willing to let God intervene in your life. And I pray that you will be in the name of the Lord. If you're watching this and you're not born again, let me tell you, this is awesome. This is, this is the whole story right here. And, 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 and all God wants is a yes from your part. To say, I'm willing to, to invite you, Lord. I'm willing to let you come into my life. Just like Mary. I don't understand. I don't know how, uh, you know, how this thing works, but I know that you work it. So I'm giving you an open check. Look at Mary. Mary's response was, Behold the hand of the maiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to the word of the Lord. If there ever was an answer that was appropriate in scripture, that would be it right there. Behold the hand of the maiden of the Lord. She's saying, great, here I am. Lord, whatever you want to do, my life is available. Welcome, you do whatever you please and do your, have your way in my life. That's what God is asking us to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's Mary. Now the second lady, then we finish the, you know, the service for this morning. If you go to the book of Luke chapter 2 now, so we've, looked, we've already looked at uh, you know, um, uh, Mary's life in chapter 1, but when you look at um, the book of Luke chapter 2, you discover there, you know, there are several people there that when, 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 uh, when, when the Lord was born and uh, you know, this whole... Um, Manger situation is happening over here. The shepherds have come and, and um, you know, rejoiced and have gone out and are spreading the word everywhere, you know. Mary and Joseph are still trying to figure this thing out, you know. And then uh, on the eighth day, you know, they bring the Lord Jesus Christ into the temple to be named, you know, it's, it's, it's to be circumcised, you know, and also to be named on that day, you know. But what happens is very interesting. In that whole setup, um, 
there's a guy that's called Simeon. He comes in by the Spirit at exactly that moment. Well, actually, after the, after the eighth days, after the naming, then they go back, and then when the days of our purification were over, which, is, which would be uh, 33 days, you know, from the day of birth, according to Leviticus, I believe it's chapter 12. But anyways, you know, um, at that time, when, when they come to present the Lord, uh, to, you know, present Jesus to God, um, you know, that's when Simeon comes in, prompted by the Spirit of God, and he says some powerful things about, about the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, he had here, the Bible says that he already had a promise from God that he will not die before he sees uh, the, 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 the salvation of the Lord for Israel. You know, so, verse 25 and all that. But if you keep going down, um, you know, you find in verse 36, a scripture that I, that I would like for us to just look at the other woman of Christmas, and then we'll be able to wrap this up. It says in verse 36, Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, hey, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. We're given very interesting details about this woman. You know, her name is Anna. She's a prophetess. Her dad is called Phanuel. And then she's from the tribe of Asher. You know, ordinarily you don't hear this about women in scripture. Usually you hear this about men. He says she was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow now of about 84 years. Now, we don't know whether she had been widowed for 84 years or she was a widow of 84 years of age. It's, you know, either way, it's still a long time. And so it says here, this woman was a widow for about 84 years who did not depart. Now listen to this. Who did not depart from the temple, but served God. Listen to that. But served God with fastings and prayers night and day. <laughs> Woo! And coming in that instant, the very same instant when Simeon is giving the prophecy that he was giving, at that very instant, she comes into that dedication service and, you know, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of the Lord Jesus Christ to all those who looked for, the red for redemption in Jerusalem. Here is a woman that we see in the Christmas story that is just absolutely amazing. This woman, first of all, she was widowed at a young age. She has lived as a widow for what I can, uh, from, 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 from my calculation, is at least 50 years. At least 50 years, because you know they would ordinarily get married at about, you know, um, 17, 18 years of age, you know. And so when you think, if even if we say she was 84 years of age, you know, when you take 84, uh, you know, take away 17, it's, 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 about, it's almost 60 years. So for at least 50 years, she had been widowed. And the Bible says she served God constantly with fastings and with prayers night and day, as in Keshas and regular everyday prayers. Wow! What a woman! Can you imagine having a ministry of prayer and fasting for 50 plus years? That's how, the Bible says she served God. That was her ministry to God. She served God with prayers and fastings. You know? I, 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 I want just to share this as we finish our time together. Anna the prophetess no wonder she was a prophetess. I mean, she was spending all that much time in prayer. My goodness, you're going to hear something. You have to hear something. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're fasting and praying night and day for years, you're, gone, you're bound to hear something. You're going to hear something. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost is guiding and directing her in terms of, um, you know, what to pray and how to pray and all these things. You know, but here's the thing that I noticed. Please notice that in the scripture we just read, that the Bible says that she spoke of the Lord. She spoke of him to all those who look for redemption in Jerusalem. In other words, her assignment of prayer was an assignment of redemption. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. She begins talking about redemption. In other words, here she was, and, and she had figured it out somehow, somewhere, along the, 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 the way of her, uh, her journey in life. She had gotten to a place where she figured out, my assignment is the redemption of Israel, and I'm going to pray and fast night and day for the redemption of Israel. She took her assignment seriously. You know, think about this. 
when you look at the Christmas story, it's amazing. When you look at, you look at uh, Joseph and Mary, you know, and the things that were happening, how Herod wanted to kill the baby, and, you know, the angel comes and, and tells Joseph, go to Egypt, and they flee to Egypt at night, you know, uh, and then they, they end up there. I mean, it was like, go now. You know, you need to go. If it wasn't at night, it was definitely immediately the next day they left. You know, they, they go there, and then in Egypt, they are there for, you know, about 12 years, and uh, they stay there, and then they come back after Herod has died, you know, and they said, down you know over here in, in what God is you know in, in Nazareth again you know all the protection that you see in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ I wonder who prayed it through could it be that God raised Anna the daughter of Phanuel hallelujah and her assignment was to pray the Lord Jesus through in terms of the first few years of his life on earth. I mean, you know, God gives his people assignment, an assignment of redemption. She wasn't praying for herself all these 50 years. She was praying for the redemption of Israel. You know, this is a woman that God found able, listen now carefully, this is a woman who God found able to conceive a burden. Hallelujah. And she was able to carry the pregnancy of that burden even for 50 years if need be. I want to encourage somebody here today. You might be right now in this Christmas season. You might be in the middle of a gestation period. Woo! You may be at a point now where you are carrying a burden. You are carrying, you know, a, 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 you know, an assignment. There's something that God has put in your life. There's an assignment for your life. You may have come to the place where you have discovered your purpose in life. And now you're giving yourself, devoting yourself to the fulfillment of this purpose. And it includes a lot of sacrifice. It includes a lot of prayer. It includes a lot of, you know, particular effort. And, and, and right now, you're going through the thick of it. And you're, like, you're at a place where you're like, oh my goodness, you know, this thing is quite serious. I want to encourage you. There is a precedent in the scriptures that God allowed a woman to be in a situation where she carried the assignment and she carried it for 50 plus years until one day, I believe with the dedication of the Lord here, I believe that day she discovered her assignment was done. Wow. Glory to God. And so as we finish up this, uh, you know, this women of Christmas story, we see tremendous lessons. Anna teaches us this, the, the lesson of staying committed to your assignment until you finish it through. Christmas is, an, is a season to remember that you and I have an assignment from God. And that assignment has to do with the redemption of mankind. We have an, that's what we've been doing the 40 Day Salvation Challenge. We, we have an assignment from God. And, and, and this assignment requires much sacrifice. It requires prayer. It requires, you know, you know, uh, uh, engaging. It requires uh, 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 fasting. It requires, you know, engagement in to the degree that the purposes of God are born. And I want to challenge and encourage you at the same time. Praise the Lord. Could it be that you Oh my goodness. I feel like standing up and running up and down and just, you know, kicking something. You know, I, need, I feel like I need to kick something. Praise God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Could it be that you have an assignment from God to see your entire family get born again? Why are you upon the face of the earth besides just making a daily living? You know, can it be really that God's major assignment for your life is to make a living on earth? Could it be that God sent you from heaven to come to earth and make a living all the days of your life? And then you died and then you went back to heaven. And all you did is make a living. Could that really be the, the reason why God gave you and I life? No! There's something bigger to live for. And Anna the prophetess shows us there's something, there's a prophetic destiny to live for. Oh, God, Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit help you and I to discover we have a prophetic destiny. We have a prophetic purpose for living. There's something you have an assignment to do. There's an assignment you have from heaven to do and to fulfill. There's something that you have been specifically assigned to as an individual to tackle and to fulfill for the glory of God. Hallelujah. God wants you and I to partner with him in this redemption story. This is why Anna the prophetess is in this story. This is why Anna the prophetess is in this Christmas story to remind us in this Christmas season before we forget, before we get caught up with all the, you know, all the um, halos and, 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 and all the glitter and, you know, all the food and all the cheer and all the songs before we forget that. 
Don't forget you have an assignment from God. You are an individual with a specific purpose, with a specific assignment. Glory to God. God has called you. God has gifted you. God has wired you. God has talented you in a certain way because it's an assignment for you to fulfill. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know what? You will only be fulfilled when you fulfill the assignment of God for your life. The greatest fulfillment in life comes not from having a lot of money, a lot of fame, or, uh, you know, ask the billionaires of this world. You have all of that and still your lives are meaningless. The greatest degree of fulfillment in life comes not from acquiring the things of the world, but from fulfilling your God-given purpose, your God-given destiny. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to declare today by the grace of God, may God help you even during this Christmas season to come to a place where, where you appreciate even a bit better the assignment of God for your life. What are you all about, man? What are you here for? What did God create you to do? Anna the prophetess, she devoted herself. She lived for, for 50 plus years, engaging this one purpose, praying for the redemption of Israel, praying and fasting night and day, redemption of Israel. Next year, redemption of Israel. Year after that, the redemption. Hey, could it be that God has raised you up to be the one to intercede for the redemption of Kenya, the redemption of East Africa, the redemption of Africa? Could it be that you have an assignment? And you may be engaged in this assignment for years and years and years, but it is the assignment God has given you which means he has equipped you for it, you are well gifted for it, and you can do it by the grace of God. You can do it by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah! Mm. So, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we conclude our time together, <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The thing that I want to encourage us is, look at these three women of Christmas that we've discussed today. I mean, uh, you know, last week and this week and today. You know, we talked about Elizabeth. Elizabeth teaches us that God oftentimes will take you down a unique path. But all the while, you know what God is doing? He's allowing you to go through challenges, issues, difficulties uh, to, 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 to bring out in you hallelujah, the, 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 the quality of trust in God to where you're able to believe God, you're able to come to a place where you live with joy in spite of the challenge. You're more interested in the blessed son than in the blessing. You don't get upset and begin to, you know, uh, get all, you know, riled up because God hasn't done. Where is the blessing? I have been faithful. I have done. I have given my tithe. I have given my offerings. I have prayed. I've, I go to church. I never miss church. Even I never miss other meetings, fellowships. So how come God hasn't done for me? Me, I've done for him. He has not done for me. I don't think God loves me. I don't think God, all of that, you know, that is, that is really immaturity. God is trying to say, look, I want, I want you to rise up above this. I want you to come to, I'm, I'm allowing you to go down this path, but I want to in the process, I want to develop a strong, mature believer in your life. Hallelujah. So, so, so Elizabeth teaches us the, the, the value and the importance, hallelujah, of being able to trust God. Come to a place of, in spite of all the challenges, come hell or high water, I will trust God. That's number one. And then Mary teaches us, hey, walk in childlike faith, man. Just trust God. It's simple. <laughs> Trusting God is simple. The solution may be complex, but that's God's department. Hallelujah. My department is to trust him and to obey him. What he says to do, I will do. I don't know how it works. I don't know how between my obedience and, and the performance of the issue, I, I'm not really interested in those details. I, I, it's not really that important. What is important is I just need to know what does, how does God want me to cooperate with him? Hallelujah. When I ask how, I'm not asking the how of unbelief. I'm asking the how of, okay, what do we do to cooperate? Hallelujah. So simple, childlike faith. And then uh, Anna, the prophetess, she teaches us this. She teaches us, stick with your assignment. Stick with your assignment. You have an assignment. Stick with it. You know, Anna means grace. Fanuel, if you study it, you'll discover that Fanuel actually comes from the, from the name Penuel, which actually means face of God, you know, and she's of the tribe of Asher. And if you go to Deuteronomy, I believe it is uh, chapter 30, if I'm not wrong, you know, where Moses is blessing Israel, and he talks about how, you know, as, as your days shall be, so shall your fruitfulness be. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here's, here's, a, here, here's a picture you see with Anna's life. Because of God's grace upon her life, you know, he, she has an assignment of staying before the face of God. And Asha means joy, by the way. Asha, the name Asha means happiness. You know, and so 
by the grace of God, she has an assignment of staying before God. But be, by the jo because of the joy of God, she's able to inherit the, the generational blessing of being fruitful even at old age. Glory to God. I pray for you that God will bless you and God will minister to you. Hallelujah. May God's grace rest upon your life. May 2021 be your best year ever. Mm. Praise the Lord. As you engage that year, hallelujah, with a, with a maturity, with, with no complaining. You're not going to complain about, about challenges and problems and issues. You just say, you know what? It is, it is well. I'm not going to throw in, you know, I'm not going to co compromise. I'm not going to compromise because of challenges. I'm going to stay righteous. I'm going to stay blameless. I'm going to walk in the commandments of God. I'm going to mature up. I'm going to grow up. I'll stay blameless. I'll stay righteous through the challenges. And in the process of going through those challenges, I'll maintain simple childlike faith. Because why? Because I have an assignment that I must fulfill for the sake of the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to pray with us as we finish today, even to the glory of God. By the way, you are awesome. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And I believe that 2021 will be the most amazing year for you as we go forward. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you and to bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the women of Christmas. Thank you for the wonderful lessons they teach us. Thank you, Lord, for the commitment to righteousness that Elizabeth teaches us. Thank you, Lord, for the simple childlike faith that Mary teaches us. And thank you, Lord God, for the reminder that we do have an assignment and that we are to commit our hearts to the assignment you've given to us in life for the glory and honor of your name. Bless everyone, Lord God, every brother, every sister. I pray that, Lord, you'll help us as we embrace this season, as we celebrate this season, even as we embrace and, 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 and engage the next year. Father, help us to carry these lessons, carry this truth, and go with them into 2021 and attack our assignment and attack that which you have ordained for us with the revelation hallelujah of your faithfulness to us in the mighty name of Jesus glory to God and if you are watching this and you're not born again like we said earlier all that God is asking for is your willingness to open your life to him look your life is maybe very complicated right now doesn't make sense difficult tough and uh, you know and, and it just can't make sense out of it you know I, 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 all I'm saying to you is God's desire is for him to come and intervene in your life. This is what Christmas is all about. It's about Emmanuel, Christ with us, God with us. If you can open your heart, God will be with you in a different dimension that you've, than you've known before. That you will, he will inter, intervene or enter into your life and then intervene from there. I'm not promising you that, you know, once you get born again, all your problems will disappear. I'm just saying that once you get born again, you will have trem tremendous access to divine wisdom, divine counsel, divine uh, instruction and direction, and divine power to approach and to deal with the issues that it may ever come into your life. So if you are not born again, I want you to simply pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I open my heart to you. And I welcome you into my life, into my ordinary life. Thank you for being willing to share this life with me. I welcome you into my life. Cleanse me by your precious blood. Save my soul and write my name in your book of life. I give you glory and praise. For hearing my prayer. Amen and amen. And I pray for you right now. Father, I pray that you bless this, my brother, bless this, my sister, bless every individual that has given their life to you. May they experience Emmanuel, God's presence with them from today henceforth in Jesus' name. Glory to God. You can call the number uh, just at the bottom of the screen and, um, you know, get in touch. Uh, We'll be able to just assist you as much as we can with every resource that we have that is available to help you grow and de develop a consistent work with the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is good and God is wonderful. I want to just encourage you, this coming week we'll be finishing up our 40 Day Salvation Challenge. Uh, it's about five days from tomorrow. Hallelujah. And we'll be talking about just cooperating with the Holy Spirit as we see our loved ones getting born again. I believe that there's going to be a harvest of people getting giving their lives to Christ. And so we'll be able to do that. And uh, let me finish by saying that tonight, you know, um, from 8 p.m. to 9.30, we're going to have a time of corporate prayer. 
you know uh, everybody that has been on the 40 day salvation challenge we're gonna have a time of you know praying together live and uh, you know on a zoom link and, and on Facebook and uh, we'll be able to pray together so come join us tonight from 8 p.m. to 9 30 p.m. we're gonna be doing that and if you don't have if, if, if you haven't if you have not yet uh, sent your name to the number the whatsapp number that we're using I'm gonna share it with you just now so you can be able to send your name there so that, you know we can be able to send you the details before tonight uh, for the zoom link and how you how you can be able to link and join together with us so the whatsapp number you know you need to use is plus two five four seven three three eight three eight seven three eight eight three eight seven three eight so plus two five four seven three three eight three eight seven three eight you send your name uh, to that to that number to you know uh, to that number we're able to give you uh, the link for tonight and it's going to be tremendous so thank you very much god bless you hallelujah it's been a, such a joy to journey together for the last um, you know five six weeks to just walk together this way and may god richly bless you in jesus name we'll see you again uh, in god's timing to the glory and honor of, you, of his name shalom hallelujah amen glory to god remember our theme verse today was deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 8 who can remind me what he says yes everybody at home let me hear what he says uh -huh. let me say it to you the bible says that the lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouse with grain the lord your god will bless you in the land he's giving you but listen to what he says in verse 2 you will experience all these blessings if you fully obey the lord your god and so this morning i want to declare unto you that you are a great nation your name is great you are blessed and you are a blessing blessed are those who bless you and cursed are those who curse you yes all the people of the world shall be blessed through you uh -huh. the lord god of your fathers abraham isaac and jacob may he increase you a thousand times and may he bless you and may the lord bless you as he has promised may the lord cause his face <clears throat> to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord turn towards you and give you peace may the, <laughs> you have the keys to the house of david whatever you shut no one can open and what you open no one can shut you know what? You are blessed as you go out. You are blessed as you come in. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country. You, the works of your hands are blessed. Yes, the fruit of your womb is blessed. Your stars are blessed. You shall lend to many nations and borrow from none. Like Jesus, you are a king. You are a priest, you are a prophet, you are a builder, you are the head and not the tail, you are at the top and never at the bottom, you are the first and never the last. And remember by the way, and the enemies who come in in one way, may the Lord scatter them in seven different ways. Why? You are a blessed, blessed man and woman of God. God declaring the blessings of the Lord. Merry Christmas and have wonderful season of these wonderful holidays. Remember, Jesus is the reason for this season. Blessings upon you. Amen and amen.